Welcome to the 10K Solar Duo PV System Installation Overview. This training aid will cover the steps involved in the mechanical and electrical assembly of the PV system onto a flat commercial rooftop. Refer to the written Duo Installation Manual for additional instructions. The Duo PV system is comprised of a module, inversion bus, and racking. These components have been engineered together as a system, delivering a fast and easy installation for any project. It is important that the system is laid out properly. The modules are installed in a bi-directional wave pattern that offers near-complete PV coverage of the installation space. This wave pattern creates a windshield that adds to the system's structural integrity. It is advisable to build the array from the back or north to the front or south. This demonstration will follow that process. It is possible to install the array from front to back, but doing so will make it more difficult to connect the modules together. The Duo array is designed so that proper installation will include a slight offset in the rectangular shape of the array. Please refer to your design plan and the Duo installation manual for exact measurements. Follow these instructions and your design plan, and this video will help make sure your installation goes quickly and smoothly. You will need the following tools and fasteners for the proper installation of the Duo system. A torque wrench with a 7 16 inch and half inch socket, a 3 16 hex key, Phillips screwdriver, wire cutter, a tape measure, string or chalk line, mallet or hammer, and the Duo fin spacing tool. The following are fasteners supplied with the system. Quarter inch stainless steel star washers, quarter 20 by three quarter stainless steel hex head cap screws, quarter 20 stainless steel combination hex nuts with star washer, 5 16 18 stainless steel combination hex nuts with star washer, quarter 20 one inch stainless steel T-bolts, 5 16 18 stainless steel threaded studs, chamfered aluminum pins, hairpin cotters, keeper plugs, and ballast hooks and clips. Many of these fasteners come on the pre-assembled fins. Extras are included. Using unapproved fasteners could compromise the grounding circuitry resulting in damage to the system, other property, or nearby personnel. Replacing approved with unapproved fasteners will void the warranty. You will receive two different length rails with your shipment. One approximately 102 inches long and the other approximately 57 inches long. The short rails will be used on the front or south and the back or north edges of the array, but may also be used in the interior of an array as it flows around roof obstructions. Apply two of the supplied self-adhering rubber bump-ons to the bottom end of each long rail and to one end of each short rail. Apply two sets of three bump-ons to the other end of the short rail and three sets of three bump-ons to the middle of the long rail. The bump-ons should be spaced as shown. The rubber bump-ons are necessary to transfer the lateral wind loads to the pad and thus the roof and are essential to the structural integrity of the system. Do not omit the rubber bump-ons. Snap roof pads between the rail flanges over the bump-ons. On the short rails, the pad over the first three bump-ons will be flush with the end of the rail and the second pad will butt up against the first. The pad over the two bump-ons on the opposite end will overhang the rail end by six inches. On the long rails, install three pads over the three sets of bump-ons in the middle and one pad overhanging the end by six inches. Omit the pad on the other end since the rail will share a pad with the adjacent rail. For rails that support ballast, inverter buses, or other equipment, additional roof pads are required to distribute the weight on the roof. Install the roof pads according to the specified ballast weight instructions that are also listed in the Duo manual. Please note, install three additional bump-ons for each additional pad. If a rail supports both an inverter and ballast, add the combined number of pads. Install additional pads as needed before laying out the rails and building your array. Sweep away loose rock where the pads contact the roof before placing rails. Begin laying out the rails. Connect a short rail to a long rail with a pre-assembled rail connector. Slide the rail connector into the slot of one of the rails, making sure the star washers are inside the slot to ensure proper grounding. Do not tighten at this time. 
Slide the two rails together, being sure the rail pad is snapped into the second rail's flanges. Leave a 3 8 inch gap between the rails. Slide the rail connector evenly into place and torque the quarter 20 by 3 quarter inch bolts to 6 foot pounds. Connect a second set of rails approximately 78 inches apart with the short rails to the back or north of the array. The Duo uses two different fins. The short fins are installed on short rails at the ends of the array, and the tall fins are installed in the center of every long rail. Slide the short fin into the slot of each of the short rails. Make sure the star washer slides into the rail. Locate the center of the fin 10 and a half inches from the end of the rail. Tighten the cap screws to six foot pounds. Assemble the fin spacing tool per the included instructions and use it to begin locating the tall fins. Place the single slot on the threaded stud on the short fin. Slide the tall fin until the inner slot on the fin spacing tool drops over the lower threaded stud. Once the fin has been properly located, tighten the fin's cap screws to six foot pounds. When placing the 10K module on the fin bolts, orient the module with the electrical connector lugs to east or west per your wiring plan. Place the slots on the module over the studs on the short fins of the first rail on the north end of the array. Lay the module down on the rails. Place the slots on the second array on the lower studs of the tall fin. Lift the first module and bring the tops of both modules together to form a peak. These extensions should be offset from each other so that the holes line up. Insert a hairpin cotter into the flat end of a chamfered aluminum pin. Slide the pin through the module extensions on the outside edge of the array. Insert a second hairpin cotter in the middle hole of the aluminum pin. This tapered pin forms the connection between the two modules. On the other module extension, the side where the array will continue, slide a tapered pin in just far enough to hold the frames in place. You will slide the pin in the rest of the way when the adjacent modules are installed. Insert a keeper plug in the lower module frame ends until it clicks in place. Torque the nuts that secure the module to the fins to nine foot-pounds. Do not torque these nuts until the keeper plugs are installed. It will crush the module frame and void the system's warranty. Proper tightening of these nuts is essential for structural integrity and proper grounding. Failure to install the keeper plugs or to torque the bolts and nuts connecting the module to the fins to nine foot-pounds will void the system's warranty. Continue to assemble modules in this fashion for the remainder of the row. With the back row completed, you can begin the next row. Ensuring that the rail matches your north-south reference line, install the next module to the back so that the module extensions are on the higher set of threaded studs on the fins. Place its mating module on the next fin using the lower threaded stud. When adding a module pair alongside an existing module pair, it may be necessary to tap the tapered pin from the first pair with a mallet to secure the frames of all four modules. Continue to assemble the modules as previously shown. It is recommended installing the inverter bus prior to installing any module pair that would cover the inverter bus. For the final rows at the front or south end of the array, the short rails are used to complete the column. Short fins are used at the very front. If a notch is required in the front or rear of the array to avoid roof obstructions, and if it is more than one module wide, a short rail is used instead of a long rail. If the notch is in the front of the array, a short fin is used. If the notch is in the rear, use a tall fin. These principles apply to areas with obstructions in the middle of an array where module pairs need to be emitted. The 10K inverter bus mounts across two adjacent rails under the peak formed by two modules. The inverter bus should be installed on the array's perimeter immediately adjacent to an aisle to provide access to the DC distribution box. It is recommended installing the inverter bus prior to installing any module pair that would cover the inverter bus. Be sure to install an additional roof pad on each rail below the inverter bus mounting brackets. Set the inverter bus bracket feet onto the rails. Insert two T-bolts into the rails that will carry the inverter bus and slide them into the feet of the bracket. Locate the front of the bracket toward the rear of the array, seven and a half inches from the end of the rail. The inverter bus can be oriented in either direction, 
Orienting it with the DC distribution box facing the front of the array will give more working room. Fasten a quarter 20 combination nut on each T-bolt and torque to 6 foot-pounds. Check that the module frame clamp is installed in the correct location. Once the inverter bus is in place, install the module pair that will cover it. The 10K module features insulation displacement connectors that allow the two AWG USE2 aluminum conductor to be connected to the module without stripping the insulation. For the first module on a circuit, place an end cap on the conductor. Lay the conductor into the lug opening, leaving the end cap one to two inches outside of the lug opening. Make sure the wire is in the channel in the plastic housing. Tighten the set screw until it makes contact with the conductor's insulation. Mark the set screw so you can easily count the turns. Using a 3 16 hex key, tighten the set screw three and a quarter turns. Wait at least 10 seconds and tighten another quarter turn. This is equivalent to nine and a half foot-pounds. Repeat these steps for the other connector. After the screws have been properly tightened, install the connector caps. Each cap is pre-filled with silicone gel. With the cap over the lug assembly, align the tabs with the slots and snap into place. Connect the remaining modules to the circuit using the same method. Leave at least one inch of slack that sags downward to direct rainwater away from the connectors. To connect the modules to the inverter bus, remove the DC distribution box door. Make sure all of the circuit breakers are switched off and remove the dead front cover. Strip one half inch of insulation off the ends of the positive and negative conductors of one branch of modules. The DC conductors enter through the centermost cord grips on the bottom of the distribution box. Connect the negative conductors to the negative terminal bars on either side of the distribution box. Connect the positive conductors to the lugs on the circuit breaker bus bars. Land each positive conductor on the same side of the distribution box as its matching negative conductor. Torque the connections to 50 inch-pounds. Tighten the cord grips to finger tight plus one half turn. Replace the dead front and turn the circuit breakers on. Replace the cover and secure it. To install the AC disconnect assembly, set the brackets on the rails five inches from the end of the rail toward the front of the array. Place two quarter 20 by one inch T-bolts into the rails and slide them into the bracket slots. Thread a quarter 20 combination nut onto the T-bolts and torque to six foot-pounds. The top corner of the bracket and the clamp will straddle the module frame. The clamp may be repositioned for opposite hand installations. Connect the whips from the AC disconnect box to the AC side of the inverters. If the modules, fins, rails, and connectors have been assembled according to the instructions, the entire assembly can be effectively grounded by use of a suitable ground lug attached one point along one of the rails. Determine the required quantity and location of ballast. Verify that additional rail pads have been installed under the ballast locations. Ballast is added to the system using ballast hooks and clips. Install a ballast hook and clip where one end of the ballast block will go and add another where the other end will go. Lay the block into the ballast hooks. You now have a complete array and are ready to commission your 10K solar PV system. We'd like to hear from you. Send feedback to info at 10ksolar.com.